Welcome back, my friends, to Big Bill Anderson's Life Tours. Today, in the midst of the coronavirus, I am here in California with my son, Audie, and I'm here to check out a crypt that I've been trying to get to for many years. I'm in Redondo Beach, California, at Pacific Crest Cemetery, and I'm at the crypt of the man that I believe and so does the son of the victim believe that he murdered Bob Crane, the star of Hogan's Heroes television show. I am here at the crypt of John Henry Carpenter. This man right here, although he was acquitted of the murder in a trial in 1994 when the case was reinvestigated from the 1978 murder of Bob Crane in Scottsdale, Arizona. This man was with him the night before Crane was found murdered in his bed. I believe, so does Robert Crane, that this was the man that did it, although he was acquitted. I'm gonna tell you the story, my friends. It's very complicated, it's very circumstantial, which is why John Henry Carpenter was not convicted of the murder. But I want you to stay with me. It's a sad case involving a very, very good person in Bob Crane, star of Hogan's Heroes, who was viciously killed by a friend. Stay with me, my friends. John Henry Carpenter was born on June 24, 1928. He was a video equipment salesman, most widely known as the friend and accused murderer of actor Bob Crane. If it wasn't for the Hogan's Heroes television star Bob Crane, John Henry Carpenter's life and death would have gone without much public awareness. Carpenter was of Native American and Spanish heritage. He was born on an Indian reservation where, as, as a teenager, he often earned money as a migrant worker, harvesting apricots. He served in the U.S. Army and was married twice. Following his retirement from the U.S. Army, he took a job marketing video technology, achieving expertise in that field and becoming head of the video wing of a new Japanese electronics company debuting in the United States called Sonycom later to be known simply as Sony. During the run of Hogan's Heroes from 1965 through 1971, actor Richard Dawson introduced Crane to Carpenter, who often helped famous clients with video and audio equipment. The two men struck up a friendship and began going to bars together. Crane attracted women due to his celebrity status and introduced Carpenter as his manager. Later, they would videotape their sexual encounters. Crane's son, Robert, insisted that all of the women were aware of the videotaping and consented to it. Carpenter later became a national sales manager at Akai and arranged his business trips to coincide with Crane's dinner theater touring schedule so that the two could continue seducing and videotaping women. In June of 1978, Crane was staying in the Winfield Place Apartments in Scottsdale, Arizona during a run of the play Beginner's Luck at the Windmill Theater, at the Windmill Dinner Theater. On the afternoon of June 29, 1978, Crane's co-star, Victoria Ann Berry, entered his apartment after he failed to show up for a lunch meeting and discovered his body. Crane had been murdered with a weapon that was never identified. Though investigators believed it to be a camera tripod, an electrical cord had also been tied around his neck in a bow. The Scottsdale Police Department, small in size at the time, had no homicide division and was ill-equipped to handle such a high-profile murder investigation. The crime scene yielded few clues. No evidence of forced entry was found and nothing of financial value was missing. Detectives examined Crane's extensive videotape collection, which led them to John Henry Carpenter, 
who had flown to Phoenix on June 25th to spend a few days with Crane. Carpenter's rental car was impounded and searched. Several blood smears were found that matched Crane's blood type. No one else known to have been in the car, including Carpenter, tested for that type. DNA testing was not yet available. With no other significant material evidence, the Maricopa County attorney declined to file charges. Carpenter became a suspect in the slaying of Bob Crane almost immediately when he called from California, the Scottsdale apartment where Crane's body was had just been found and caught police Lieutenant Ron Dean's attention by failing to ask if anything was wrong by the police answering Crane's phone. He returned to the scene of the crime by phone, said Dean, now retired. The lieutenant spent a decade investigating a case that had became one of entertainment industry's longest-running, most provocative murder mysteries. In 1990, Scottsdale Police Detective Barry Vassell and Maricopa County Attorney's Office investigator Jim Raines, a former Phoenix homicide investigator, re-examined the evidence from 1978 and persuaded the county attorney to reopen the case. Although DNA testing of the blood found in Carpenter's rental car was inconclusive, Raines discovered an evidence photograph of the car's interior that appeared to show a piece of brain tissue. The actual tissue samples recovered from the car had been lost, but an Arizona judge ruled that the new evidence was admissible. In June 1992, Carpenter was arrested and charged with Crane's murder. Crane's son, Robert, testified that in the weeks before his father's death, that his father had repeatedly expressed his desire to sever his friendship with Carpenter. He said Carpenter had become a hanger-on and a nuisance to the point of being obnoxious. My dad expressed that he just didn't need Carpenter kind of hanging around him anymore. Witnesses also came forward saying the night before Crane was killed, he and John Henry Carpenter had been seen at a restaurant having a heated argument. Court records indicate that three forensic experts have linked blood and human tissue samples discovered on Crane's pillowcase to that found in the car Carpenter leased in Scottsdale. The alleged murder weapon, one of Crane's two camera tripods, has not been recovered. The motive, according to the detectives, was that they believed Crane had grown tired of his friendship with Carpenter, and Carpenter could not handle the rejection. Detectives said that they had seen Crane's appointment book and all his future meetings with Carpenter after June 29, 1978, were crossed out. In 1994, Carpenter was tried and eventually acquitted. He maintained his innocence and later said he felt a huge relief after his name had been cleared. One jury member later said in an interview that the jury believed that there was insufficient proof to determine Carpenter's guilt and that you cannot prove someone guilty on speculation. During a book signing I attended on February 16, 2017, Robert Crane told a group of people that just hours before Bob Crane's body was discovered in Scottsdale, John Henry Carpenter called he, Robert, at his Los Angeles apartment that he shared with his father, Bob, and told him that he never that if he ever needed anything, that he, Carpenter, was just a phone call away. Robert found this very suspicious and said that in the many years that he had known Carpenter, he had never once received a phone call from him. And like I said earlier, this was before anyone, perhaps except Carpenter, knew Bob Crane had been murdered. Robert said he felt that it was a very guilty, conscience-ridden Carpenter calling that day. John Henry Carpenter died on September 14, 1998, at the age of 70, just four years after his acquittal. My friends, I hope you like this video. I felt compelled to do this as I am a big fan of Bob Crane and the Hogan's Hero television show. And I have always been outraged over his murder in Scottsdale, Arizona in 1978. And the fact that no one was technically brought to uh, pay for that crime. 
Uh, by all accounts, Bob Crane was a very nice man. His last night alive at the Windmill Dinner Theater after his performance of Beginner's Luck, he stood in the lobby and signed autographs and posed for photos with everyone that wanted a photo or an autograph from him. Uh, by all accounts, he was an extremely nice man. So if you like this video, please like, share, and feel free to comment on your feelings of whether John Henry Carpenter was possibly the person that killed Bob Crane. I also want to thank all my subscribers and new and older subscribers to taking time out of your busy day to watch this video uh, regarding Bob Crane and John Henry Carpenter. And I thank you very much for subscribing. And with that, my friends, I will say goodbye for now. Everyone, please be safe. And adios, amigos.